We've been learning about lots of different ways to solve quadratics, and today we're going to talk about a second way that solves every single quadratic that you can have. So we talked about completing the square that can solve any quadratic that you have, and this is quadratic formula. It can also solve any quadratic um, that's out there. So the quadratic formula is used to solve quadratic equations in standard form which is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Remember it has to be equal to zero before you start. Um, a will be a number and remember it's always in front of the x squared. B will be a number but it may also be zero and C will also be a number but it also may be zero. So A is the only one that has to absolutely be a number. So you will have x squared um, and these two may or may not be there but remember it has to be set equal to zero before you start. So the quadratic formula and you're going to want to go ahead and memorize this because you will use it uh, for the rest of your mathematics career. We've had people take the ACT um, and have used it then. They've used it in college. This gets used for quite a while. So you want to go ahead and memorize it. And to help you, I have a little song. It goes to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. Um, please do not judge me based on my singing, but it goes x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And I know that wasn't quite the tune, but you know what? Deal with it. So let me write out the words for you here, and then we'll sing it again because, like I said, you are going to use this forever, and... Um, so it's good to memorize it. So it's x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared. I wanted to write that out, sorry. b squared minus... 4ac divided by 2a. So x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And go ahead and sing that to yourself a few times because you are going to want to memorize it. And I'll sing it for you a lot probably as we go about this video. Um, so notice this is finding x equals for us, so it's finding x-intercepts, it's finding factors, it's finding um, zeros, all of those things mean the same thing. So when we compute this, we will be finding x-intercepts, factors, zeros, all of those things, but we'll be finding what x equals. Um, so one of the things that helps us with this is called the discriminant. M A N A N T. Okay. The discriminant is just this part. It's just the B squared minus 4AC part. Um, that's important. Now, notice that B squared is part of that, and don't forget that anytime you square something, it will always be positive. So, if you're putting it in your calculator, you may need to put parentheses around it as you put it in so that calculator will tell you. Um, how to do that correctly. But here's something else that will help you. Um, we, When we do this we need to count the negatives because if people get anything from this wrong it's because of this discriminant usually. Um, if for example we have 25 minus 4 and then let's say our a is 3 and our b is negative 2 you need to count the negatives. So 
we have how many negatives in this? We have a negative here and we have a negative here. So there are two negatives. So what that means is we will be adding. Okay, so we would do four times three times negative two and then that we would add that to 25. Um, there's also when you have an odd number of negatives, like if you had 25 minus four times three times positive two, or if you had 25 minus four times negative three times negative two, notice in this situation we have one or three negatives, meaning an odd number of negatives. So when there's an odd number of negatives, we will be subtracting. Okay, so count your negatives to know if you're gonna add this b squared, sorry. Count your negatives to see if you'll be adding this b squared to what comes after it or if you'll be taking what comes after it away from this b squared. Okay, now let's get into actually trying some problems. So. Flip your paper if you need to. I do. So, um, our first example is going to be, let me get it on the screen here, 3x squared minus 10x equals negative 3. Okay, so what we talked about was that we needed to have it set equal to 0, so we need to move this 3 over. So 3x squared minus 10x plus 3, now it equals 0. And so we look at what a is. a is 3, b is negative 10 because it comes in front of the x, and c has no x, it's 3. So then when we write the quadratic formula, x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Now we are going to replace a, b, and c with what numbers they are equal to. x is the only letter that gets to stay. So x equals opposite b. Our b is negative 10, so the opposite of that is 10, plus or minus the square root. And then remember we put this in parentheses, negative 10 squared minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is 3, divided by 2 times a. So x equals 10 plus or minus the square root. Um, so t 10, negative 10 times negative 10 is 100. And then we have 4 times 3 times 3, which is 36. Let me count my negatives. 1, there's only 1, so I'm going to be subtracting over 6. So 10 plus or minus, if I subtract that, I get 64 divided by 6. Okay, so now here is when we um, need to take our square root. Um, so 10 plus or minus the square root of 64 is 8. And then we split this because of that plus minus. We know we're going to have 10 plus 8 divided by 6. We're also going to have 10 minus 8 divided by 6. So 10 plus 8 is 18 divided by 6, that gives us an x value of 3. 10 minus 8 is 2 divided by 6, that gives us an x value of 1 third. So our x values, x equals 3 and x equals 1 third. Now when you put that in a math Excel, you'll obviously have to do um, comma, x equals 3 comma, um, 1 third. Now I also want to talk to you a little bit about the discriminant here. Um, when your discriminant, and remember that's the thing under the square root, a n t, sorry, I spelled that wrong a lot. When your discriminant is positive, like ours was here, ours was 64. Okay, so when your discriminant is positive, that means you will have two real distinct solutions meaning you will have two real solutions and they will be different. OK, 
Okay, so when your discriminant is positive, you're gonna have two separate solutions. So as soon as we got that this was positive 64, I knew I was gonna have two answers. Um, and it would cross, if I graphed that parabola, it would cross the x-axis two different times. So let's try another one. 7x squared plus 7x, nope, 7x squared plus 7 equals 10. Now you'll notice if I hadn't messed up, what we would have is that, and what I knew I messed up there, is because I wanted to try one that didn't have an x term. So I have 7x squared, 7 minus 10 is negative 3. So now that it's set equal to 0, I look for a, b, and c. a is in front of my x squared term, so it's the 7. b is in front of my x term, and if you'll notice, there is no x term, so it is 0, because there is no x term. And then c is negative 3, because it doesn't have an x. So then we sing our quadratic formula song again. x equals opposite b, but since b is 0, we're just going to have 0 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Okay, so sorry that 0 looks like a d, but that says square root of 0 squared minus 4 times 7 times negative 3 divided by 2 times 7. So now we get into our math. Um, we have 0 then I have 0 squared minus 4 times 7 times negative 3. Um, that is 0. And then I have 2 negatives, so I'll be adding. And that's 84. So 0 plus 84 is 84. Divided by 2 times 7, which is 14. So now what I notice here is 84 is not a perfect square. So unlike in my last one, I can't just take the square root of it. So we make our factor tree. Uh, 84 divides by 4 and 21. 4 doesn't divide 4. Yes, it does. Sorry. 2 and 2. 21 divides by 3 and 7. So remember, I when after I make my factor tree, I look for pairs. I've got a pair of 2s, and then I've got a 3 and a 7, which don't have a pair. So when I write this, um, I have 0, plus or minus, since the 2s were a pair, they come outside, and what did not have a pair gets left under the radical, and we multiply it back together. 3 times 7 is 21, divided by 14. Okay, now when I'm actually writing this answer, I don't need this 0. Um, it doesn't change my answer. So now I need to look at my numbers that are outside my radical and see if I can simplify it at all. So can you think of a number that 2 and 14 both can divide by? Yeah, they both can divide by 2. So we divide just the numbers that are outside the radical. The only way we can simplify inside a radical is if we could factor it out using our factor tree. And we can't factor 21 anymore, so this is going to be plus or minus uh, the square root of 21, and if you want to put a 1 here, you certainly may, over 7. Okay. And then once again, since that 84 was positive, I know I have two real solutions. So probably Math Excel is going to require you to write this as 21 divided by 7, comma, negative square root of 21 divided by 7. Okay. So um, don't forget that... The discriminant tells you how many x-intercepts you have. So I'm just going to add this little chart over here. Um, so the discriminant tells us how many um, x-intercepts roots or zeros you have, those are all the same thing. Um, if your discriminant is zero, um, sorry, if you have no 
real solutions. So if we have something with 